would you have any chance to stand up to this army of Obamaites? Oh, is this all madness? Have I gone over the edge? Wait and see. Because I've gone over the edge before, and every time I have, I've been right eventually. I see the handwriting on the wall. I know where this is going. Obama is a dictator. Obama has never had anyone say no to him. Obama, I'm going to remind you again, is a man who grew up in Hawaii. Hawaii is a wonderful place in many ways. It was filled at the time he was growing up with rather wealthy, far-left white people who literally worshipped a certain type of personality. Obama was that personality. They got on their hands and knees to Obama. They smoothed the skids for Obama. They had him out to uh, um, salons in Kailua in, in Hawaii. They mentored Obama in the ways of the left. They made sure he got a scholarship to Ponahu. They made sure he got into Harvard. Every step of the way, the skids were greased and no one said no to him. Now that he is president and cannot believe it himself, he now wants to become the messiah of the world. And so he is talking about a global new deal. Now that was yesterday. Today he denied it. They ran it up the, the flagpole so that you'd go, wow, that's okay. He's not really as bad as we think. You don't understand that it's all a strategy of Rahm Emanuel. In other words, if they ratchet up the fear and then take it back down a notch, you're happy with how far he's pushed and that he didn't go any further. That's the game they're playing. But they're dealing with a master psychologist called Michael Savage. Make no mistake about it. I may have no power whatsoever. I may have no access to the media whatsoever. But I have you. You stopped the Dubai ports deal. You stopped McCain and Kennedy from granting amnesty to 30 million illegal aliens. You stopped the appointment of Harriet Myers to the Supreme Court under George Bush. You did so many, many good things. So don't assume you are powerless. The people who have made you powerless are the Republicans themselves. Make no mistake about that as well. That is why they ran this fraudulent little event on the weekend called the Conservative Political Action a, a convention. Well, it was a nice gathering, I am sure. But how many people there heard the words borders, language, or culture? I listened to the speeches. All I heard were, we've got to return to conservative principles. We've got to get those Democrats out of power. Really? What are the conservative principles, Mr. Romney? He didn't disclo disclose any. Just as Bernanke will not disclose where the $2.2 trillion went, neither will Romney articulate what conservative principles are. Because truthfully, there's no difference between the two parties. Borders, language, culture. Now, I address this to my entire audience. Don't assume that I become number three in the United States of America this late in the day. And remember, I want to re repeat to you. This show starts fairly late on the East Coast and in late afternoon on the West Coast. And consequently, the audiences are smaller than they would be if the show started, for example, at noon on the East Coast. There's a much larger day part audience. And so consider this, although I'm not on the largest stations in America, in most cities, and although I'm not on in the, day, in the daytime when most people listen to talk radio, nevertheless, this little show has become number three in the country. What is that based upon? Tell me what it's based upon. Mere entertainment or something else? And so I address to my larger audience, which consists, I'm sure, of many, many Democrats Many, many people who consider themselves independents. Many, many people who call themselves liberals, uh, etc. I appeal to all of you to understand what has happened. I cannot comprehend how you liberals don't understand that a dictatorship, whether it be a left-wing dictatorship or a right-wing dictatorship, is not going to be good for your children. I cannot comprehend how you can be sitting here cheering for Obama, who by all uh, intents and purposes is a dictator. Someone has to oppose this man. The Republicans are not capable of it. They are a supine, invisible force. They are not a force at all. They can be bought off for 30 pieces of silver. It is up to the American people to say no to Obama. Again, I ask you, if this man has done so much damage in so short a period of time, I want you to project ahead one year, two year, three year, four year, and you tell me you think your child or your grandchild is going to have the freedoms that you had? Let's talk about freedom versus slavery.
Let's talk about individual liberty versus the state telling you what to do from morning until night. You tell me Obama and his minions do not want to control you from the cradle to the grave? I would disagree with you. I believe Obama has turned the world upside down. I believe uh, that Obama is a natural disaster for the freedom-loving people of this country. And I believe that you can do nothing about it. And the only thing that can save us now is an act of God himself. Does it not worry you that the government is attacking individual opinion in this country? It worries the hell out of me. I, I see myself someday walking through the pages of, you know, Atlas Shrugged or 1984 in reality. And being I have another book for you to read. It's called It Can't Happen Here by Sinclair Lewis. I mentioned it on the show today. It was written in 1935. And although Sinclair Lewis was a, uh, a socialist who feared the arrival on the American scene of a right-wing dictatorship, much of what he predicted would happen if right-wingers took over America is actually happening right now under Obama. So what I want to say to you is that it doesn't matter whether Obama declares himself to be a liberal or a conservative. Fundamentally, we have a dictatorship emerging. That's the point I am trying to make. It is a bipartisan statement or nonpartisan statement. Now I'll make another prediction. <clears throat> I predict that very soon Obama will create a crisis along the lines of the Reichstag, fi Reichstag fire. I don't know what form it will take, but I believe that once the minions are seen for what they are, Ram Emanuel and his gang will set off a Reichstag fire in this country of some kind, and they will recall the military dictatorship of Lincoln and Stanton during the Civil War when civ civilian suspects were arrested without warrant. I will tell you as I sit here, I fear that every night as I go to sleep. I put nothing past these agitators who have suddenly seized control of the most powerful economy and the most powerful military on earth. No, my friends, I am losing a great deal of sleep every night because I do see this happening right before my eyes. Again, I will repeat what I just said. Mark it down. I again tell you that there will be the equivalent of a crisis on the order of the Reichstag fire. I don't know where it will occur. I don't know how it will occur. I don't know what form it will take. But during this crisis that will be triggered by the Democrats around Obama, the gang that surrounds Obama, they will bring up Lincoln. They will recall the military dictatorship of Lincoln in, uh, in other terms during the Civil War. And they will do what Lincoln did. And they will arrest civilians without warrant in the name of saving the economy or saving the government from a right-wing takeover. Mark my words. You can put that down and you can put it in bronze, not on ice. I can guarantee you that that's what these people are planning. And that's what these people will do when they become desperate enough, when they are finally seen for who they are. This is a gang. Make no mistake about it. This is not as much an administration as it is a gang. The gang, again, has taken over within less than two months, virtually all finance in the country, banking, insurance, stocks, bonds, and mortgages, all under their absolute control. That's why they will not disclose where the $2.2 trillion has gone. Savage.